Welcome back to Binder TV and Inside IH, a bonus segment with Joe Torres of Dearborn, Michigan. Uh, we just interviewed him on his 1979 Scout Rally, and he has some memorabilia that he's going to share with us. Welcome back, Joe. What you got to show us? Hey, John. Uh, so I have some interesting uh, items that uh, I would say aren't quite uh, generic um, uh, historical items that you might find at a at a at a, uh, a shop, um, a, a um, oh, uh, antique shop. Uh, but these are actually unique to my grandparents who own the dealership. Um, so. I guess I'll start off with some tools. Um, when they closed their dealership, they actually, in their showroom, uh, had a lot of tools that um, they would sell to anybody off the street who wanted to buy uh, International Harvester branded uh, items. So, for instance, this is a, a three-quarter inch drive with uh, large sockets. Um, never been used, never circulated, never... Bring never, that up so we can see the IH. Never even uh, uh, used to, to actually do their job. Um, you can see the international logo. There's a little bit of surface rust from sitting for years and years and years. Um, when they closed their dealership, they they basically took their inventory and kind of stored it in their house, uh, mostly their basement. So when my grandmother died recently, um, uh, as I rummaged through her house to, to try to prepare it for sale, I came across a lot of interesting items um, that thankfully we did not throw away because I told my entire family who helped out uh, to to uh, clear her house and, and disposition her items. Anything that has an IH logo, IH, anything, Let's do not go to Disney throw World. out. Right. Um, so at, at any rate, I came across a box, a large cardboard box filled with uncirculated International Harvester tools. And Bring I know, that closer. I know that there's a lot of interest in international branded tools, and I was just lucky enough to find uh, a large assortment. This just represents a small fraction, but I had half inch drive, three eighths drive, um, three quarter inch drive, uh, brand new tools. This is a toolbox that it's been used. Uh, my grandfather actually used this after they uh, closed their dealership. He used this in his workshop. And um, for the most part, I have most of the tools. I'm still looking for replacement tools um, to replace what's in there, but. Um, I remember as a kid using this to install some of the first radios in, uh, in my vehicles, um, not realizing how interesting the tools were. They were just tools to me, but now, of course, they're very interesting. Um, so as I said, assortments of wrenches and things that have really haven't been used too much. There's a few that he did use at his dealership, but you know, for the most part, that's, uh, that's a great um, set of items that did not get thrown out, thank God. Um, I also have some interesting um, radio ad um, records. So this is a great outdoors promotion. These are a few different radio ads. Uh, this is a 1970 radio ad. Um, it used to be part of a book. I don't have the book anymore, but it used to be part of a book. And what, what my understanding is what you would do is International would give you these as a dealer, and you'd go to your local radio station and pay for time on these items on... Um, uh, for, for your dealership and you would give them a record to play um, uh, to promote your dealership in your town. Uh, it wasn't done electronically like it is now so this is what they used and uh, I was actually, my aunt had um, had these stored in her um, in an old record assortment that she had as a kid that she also found and then when she saw these she immediately sent them to me so that I could keep them in my collection. Um, this is another interesting one this is an April of 1971 uh, Scout 810, the early version of the Scout 2. Uh, this was a picture that was taken by my grandparents at their dealership. My only um, my only understanding on this photo is I believe it was it was a demonstrator that the local zone manager brought to show the dealers before the Scout 2 actually came out. Um, and this was a picture taken near their dealership to show uh, again in early in early 810 in April of 71 um, you know as it would have been demonstrated by the local by the local uh, zone manager um, my grandparents also went on a lot of trips with International Harvester as dealers I'm not sure what the official name was but they went to places like Morocco um, they went to uh, a, a, another location I believe in Africa they went to McCormick Place in Chicago more than once um, they, they went to uh, Disney World 
Um, these basically, uh, this is a, 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 a ticket for a tour of SeaWorld. Now I'm not sure which SeaWorld this is. I'm thinking it might have been in Florida. Maybe it was in California. I just don't know. But it, it has a uh, August 15th, 1974 um, bus number. So the dealers would show up on a bus uh, or show up and then they would get corralled onto buses and the buses would take them to, uh, to the SeaWorld destination. And it was all done through International Harvester, uh, through the logo. Um, here's another interesting one. Uh, luggage tags for what's called the Dutch Inn, August 12th of 1974. So it looks like uh, SeaWorld and Walt Disney World were the same trip since the dates are similar. This is uh, what they would have put on the luggage tag um, uh, in support of uh, the International Harvester, uh, deal some sort of a dealer convention. Again, I don't know what exactly it was in detail, but uh, this stuff was found. Very collectible stuff. Very collectible. Uh, and it's very personal because it was, you know, what they gave my grandparents. Um, this is another interesting, uh, this is one of my favorites. This is a true carbon copy. So when you see an email, a CC, you know, that, that means carbon copy, but um, it's, this is a little different. This is a true carbon copy of the original letter that was sent from um, one individual at IH to another individual at IH with my grandparents CC'd, asking them to reimburse my grandparents approximately $400 because they decided to drive to Florida instead of take the plane to Florida and uh, in in the course of driving uh, it reduced their fee to, 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 to come to Florida by $400 so they're asking this individual to reimburse my grandparents $400 uh, because they decided to drive so uh, I don't think this is something that you can duplicate even if you tried uh, it's very, very interesting cool. Um, and a few other items here. Um, I have, uh, in 1973, the Wagon Master came out <coughs> and dealer promotional literature was produced um, in the form of uh, black and white photos and, and some other interesting um, uh, paraphernalia to explain some of the standard and optional equipment on the Wagon Master. I believe the Wagon Master was only offered two years. Uh, I don't know how popular it was, but um, it was basically a travel all chopped down with a uh, travelette kind of cab and a, uh, a travel all overall body. I'm not sure how to, it was almost like a morph between the two. Um, but anyway, this was dealer, dealer literature to help promote the new product. So there's a full family of uh, international light trucks for fifth wheel trailering. So I think uh, they were trying to promote this fifth wheel trailering aspect since, since um, towing was in RV towing was was turning into a kind of a popular thing in those days this was produced 81472 and so the wagon master being a 73 model um, this is basically uh, 1973 fifth wheel vehicles from international and uh, accompanying this photo um, is more than just that here's another uh, another photo showing a, a lineup of, of trucks and whatnot towing actual trailers or or campers um, this one is also uh, a 1973 model. They call it a news photo. Um, so anyway, very interesting um, kind of items uh, that were produced. Uh, at least, uh, I'm sure they weren't uncommon since they were sent to all the dealers, but nevertheless, I like the fact that it was a Wagon Master centric type of brochure. And since the Wagon Master is kind of a rare international product, I'm really happy to have that type of a, of a, of a piece. Um, this is a uh, uncirculated gas can that my grandparents had. It was stored in, the, in a shed of theirs that was falling apart and uh, it was never used. The oxidation is on the top is the galvanized, um, the, coat, the red paint f um, being removed from the, uh, the galvanized uh, can, but absolutely never used before. No rust, um, has some patina on it, but uh, uh, Finding that uh, funnel attached is impossible. Yeah, the, the funnel, as you can see, it, it, it doesn't look like much here, but it's, it's basically all original. Um, and uh, I, I think John is right. I've never come across an old gas can that had the original funnel. That's so, rare. Super, super rare. Yeah. Um, I, I tend to bring this with me to shows because it's a great piece to share. Um, you can see that the cap, you know, absolutely no dirt, no rust, nothing. 
you unscrew the cap and sure enough there's the original the original uh gasket never been used and it never will be used <laughs> um moving along one of the one of the actually sh most shocking features of this collection now this is i would say this is 50 percent of my collection we could fit on the table here but nowhere near as big as some but again the personalization of this stuff uh, and the connection to my grandparents is one of the reasons why I'm, I'm really um, enthusiastic about this stuff. This oil can is, I think, was meant for me to be found, uh, to, meant to be found by me. Um, I'll do a close up here. Unused oil can. Now, now the, the folks at Super Scout Specialists have tons of interesting things like this that they've got in their racks at their museum. But um, this can was found in a shed at my grandparents' house when we were, when we were, uh, clearing it out, prepping for sale. The shed was in complete shambles. Matter of fact, when I walked into the shed, the last day we were there, I thought that there was nothing of value in the shed at all. There happened to be a cabinet on, against the wall. Um, it was raining that day, and I can remember the rain was pouring through the roof on this cabinet, and it must have been pouring on this cabinet for years. I open up the cabinet and I come across an IH engine oil can that was never used that's sweet i can't believe it didn't rust it didn't get destroyed being cardboard but i have a feeling that somebody was looking out for me because for it to be preserved in this state um and to be in a shed that i thought was an absolute basket case useless nothing of value i open up the cabinet and i see this can Very so neat. uh i intend to keep this can just for the memories that i had finding it um <clears throat> there's not a few uh, not too many items left um i do have some brochures from their dealership um kind of touting the different aspects of uh, rv living um fun this is called rv 73 uh, towing brochures um and i actually ex um, enlarge them and put them on uh, display in the rear i'm sorry in the uh, in the view behind me um for props for demonstrate for um, um, for showcasing um, so these again are more brochures that you would have found at a dealership um, kind of showing the different options you could get in some of the early trucks and scouts um, so yeah that's pretty much a, se a kind of a segue into the the interesting uh, things that I've found over the years from my grandparents dealership Joe we want to thank you on behalf of Binder TV inside IH it's been a pleasure and we hope to run across you again. Uh, please take care. Thank you, John.